leadership means you deal with people. Unfortunately, many just do it on an intuitive basis, think, well, I'm quite reasonably good with talking to people, chatting to people, or, well, connect with people, but do you? To be a successful leader, you need to connect to people, and we today have an international expert and keynote speaker on that topic with us. He's the author of Connected Leadership, How Professional Relationships Underpin Executive Success. Hello and welcome, Andy Lopata. Hello, Nils. Thanks for inviting me onto your podcast. Thank you very much for taking the time. Now, of course, we will face one major question in the first place. When you talk to leaders, they have a career. They are reasonably convinced, to say the least, that they do it right. So when they say, I am on a certain level of leadership, how can they miss out on something where they didn't, in your opinion, connect properly or they miss out on a benefit which they could get out of that? I, I think that a lot of people will reach leadership positions a, because they're technically excellent at what, I, uh, what they do, mm -hmm. uh, and B, because they have a natural ability to build relationships to a certain degree. The degree to which that happens will depend on the individual, obviously, um, mm. but, but, but will limit their potential progress going forward if they struggle with it. Mm -hmm. um, so I think where people miss out is by relying purely on technical ability or their natural ability to build relationships alone. If you can recognize the importance of professional relationships to, to, to being an effective leader for starters, just to doing your job well, um, but also the influence it has on progress in your career, then, and if you think strategically about it and act based on that, then of course you're going to super, you turbocharge your, your, your opportunities to develop further. Mm. So when you now have a career and you connect, but let's say you just connect better. And I, of course, prepared for this interview. And from a couple of, especially people who take care of talent development, career development in these organizations, they say, when people connect better, don't we run the risk that they get a career purely based on their network or better to say, based on their clique instead of their skills? It, 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 it's funny timing you asking me that because I interviewed yesterday a former Royal Navy commander mm. um, on, on, on the importance of professional relationships within hierarchies. And one of his key points, and it was actually his closing point in the interview, was that your, your network is built based on your competence. Mm -hmm. So effectively, you can be the nicest person in the world, the best at staying in touch with people. But if you are not good, if you, you're not reliable, if you don't deliver, if you don't have the competence uh, for the level you're at, you're not going to progress further. And, and people aren't going to put their reputations on, their, on the line just because you're a nice guy. Mm. So, so you have to have both. You have to have the competence, but then you also need to, to build the network to, to spread that word. Uh, th there was there was some research conducted uh, by Harvey Coleman um, back in, in the 90s, I think. And, and it's, it's well known in, in career development terms. It's known as PI uh, because Coleman looked at three elements that go into promotion. Uh, and the three elements were performance, image and exposure. Mm -hmm. and, and what he found was that performance, i.e. your competence, only accounted for 10% of the factors that went into promotion. Your okay. image was 30 and exposure was 60. In other mm. words, you can do a good job, but if people don't know what the good job you do is, i.e. image, or if the right people aren't aware of you in that good job, i.e. exposure, you're not going to go any further. But the flip side of that, of course, is if you do a, a bad job, people are going to know about it. Mm. So when people now think, okay, maybe I miss out on something, how do I have a professional approach to connected leadership? Because most people will say it's more an intuitive skill rather than a strategy. How do they get started putting a strategy in place? Well, I could, I could state the obvious and say pick up a copy of the book because it's, it's all in there. <laughs> <laughs> of course, of course you should do that. that. Okay. No question about it. Pick up a copy of the book. <laughs> but but, but the, ba the basics are, I mean, I talk about three key areas. The one is to understand um, where you need to build your network. The second is to understand how you nurture those relationships within that network. And the third is leverage. Now, if you leave any of those to intuition. Again, we go back to the point that some people will be better at this and more natural at this than others. 
but you're going to limit yourself to the focus you pay. And if you're relying on doing things without thinking about it, well, you're going to do it to a limited extent. If you take the time out to think, do I have the right relationships with the right people who are going to help me meet, meet my objectives? And where are the gaps? You're going to identify gaps or relationships that you're not nurturing enough or leveraging well enough. If you uh, build a strong relationship with someone, but then things come along and you, it's really easy to let that slip because other priorities get in the way. If you have some focus on it, then you'll recognize you haven't spoken to that person for several months or a couple of years and you'll reach out at a time when you don't need anything. Um, and, and in terms of leverage, it's a similar answer. You might be good at it, but you'll be missing opportunities. One of my clients, uh, after work, a workshop that I ran for his company, for the sales team, he approached uh, a major client, big global brand, and he said to his client, we would like to do some work with some other areas of your organization. Can you refer me? And not mm -hmm. only did his client refer him, but he also set up the meeting and attended the meeting to make the introduction. Now, now that information tells me that opportunity was always there. And this guy is a good networker, but mm -hmm. he never asked. It was only when we focused on it by running a workshop that he spotted the opportunity. Mm. Excellent. And now there was a very important point in there, which refers to my next question. He simply didn't ask. Um, I had a couple of people who say, I heard about networking, connected leadership. Yes, but I, this is just not for me. I'm quite introvert. I'm more the topical expert. I don't think this fits to my personality. Do you think it's a skill that anyone can acquire or do you think there are certain limits to it? There are. The limits are in how you feel about it. It's certainly something you can train yourself to do. That doesn't mean you're always going to feel comfortable doing it. But if you're in a leadership role, you should already be used to, to doing things that are not always comfortable. That's what leaders have to do. Mm -hmm. uh, it's easy to assume that extroverts are more natural at building relationships than introverts. But that's not necessarily true. What an extrovert will do very often is dominate the conversation and, and they mm -hmm. focus on themselves. Uh, and I speak as someone who's for, for many years was, was quite extrovert. Um, but by focusing on yourself, you're not really endearing yourself to other people. And it's not a great way to invest in building relationships. That's where introvert strengths come in, sitting down and listening, taking themselves out of the equation. What you actually need is a blend, an ambivert. You need to be able to feel comfortable holding conversations, but you don't need to be the centre of a big crowd. Your conversations can be one-to-one. -one. Mm. Um, but equally, you, and also you need to be able to ask other people uh, how you can help them and look out for opportunities for them. But you need to be able to ask for help when the time is right, when people are willing to help you when they're in a position to help you, it's down to you to make it easy for them to do so. Mm, excellent. Now, of course, some people might sit there and think, okay, I'm going to pick up a copy of the book. No, no question about that. But it, it sounds like it is rather complex. When I would ask you, what are, for people who want to start right now, Andy Lopata's top three tips to get started with connected leadership right now? Number one is to look at what you're trying to achieve at the moment, whether it's uh, a promotion, uh, whether it's winning a new client or getting through a difficult change in your organization. What are you trying to achieve and how can other people influence that or help you? So if we take the example of, of your next role, let's say you're now targeting your, your organization's main board and you want to get there within five years. You could look at that board now and you can say, these are the key people who are going to influence that decision when the decision is made. Even if it's in five years time, these mm. people are going to be in a position of influence. How strong is my relationship with them at the moment? What do I need to do in order to take it to the next level? Not, not so I'm looking at, I need something from them tomorrow, but mm. I can start building the relationship today. So that mm. would be the first. The second, um, and what I'm doing is I'm just taking those three areas and, and picking a tip from each area, of building, uh, nurturing and leveraging professional relationships. So from the nurturing perspective, what a lot of people do is you, you, you hear people say, you have to build your network. You've got to network. You must build your network. And what we take from that is we need to meet more people. For me, building your network starts with deepening the existing relationships you already have. Mm 
-hmm. So who have you not picked up the phone to for some time? Who, which relationships are in danger of dropping and they're in danger of forgetting you? Pick up the phone, drop them an email, whatever it might be, and just say, I've been thinking about you. How are things going? Make it about them, not about you. And if you did that one a week, you'll get amazing results. And then the third, the leverage is where can people help you right now? And who's willing to think about what you're trying to achieve? What, what are you struggling with at the moment? What's your biggest challenge? Who could help you with that? And who would be willing to help you with that? Because you have the relationship in place already. Again, pick up the phone and have a conversation. It's all about taking action. Mm, excellent. This is excellent advice. Of course, I'm going to put Andy's contact data into the show notes of this podcast. So if you want to discuss anything any further, you can contact him at any time or what I highly recommend, book him as a speaker for your conference. So for wrapping this whole interview up, there's only one thing for me left to say. Andy, thank you very much for your time. My pleasure, Niels. Thank you.